hot news from the Antarctic underground. South Pole heat source. Study bolsters a theory of heat source under West Antarctica. Illustration of flowing water under the Antarctic ice sheet. Blue dots indicate lakes. The lines show rivers. Marie Birdland is part of the bulging elbow leading to the Antarctic Peninsula. This is a NASA study. A new NASA study adds evidence that a geothermal heat source called a mantle plume lies deep below Antarctica's Marie Birdland, explaining some of the melting that creates lakes and rivers under the ice sheet. Although the heat source is not a new or increasing threat to the West Antarctic ice sheet, it may help explain why the ice sheet collapsed rapidly in an earlier era of rapid climate change and why it's so unstable today. The stability of an ice sheet is closely related to how much water lubricates it from below, allowing glaciers to slide more easily. Understanding the sources and future of the meltwater under West Antarctica is important for estimating the rate at which ice may be lost to the ocean in the future. Antarctica's bedrock is laced with rivers and lakes, the largest of which is the size of Lake Erie. Many lakes fill and drain rapidly, forcing the ice surface thousands of feet above them to rise and fall by as much as 20 feet. The motion allows scientists to estimate where and how much water must exist at the base. Some 30 years ago, a scientist at the University of Colorado, Denver, suggested that heat from a mantle plume under Marie Bird land might explain regional volcanic activity and a topographic dome feature. Very recently, seismic imaging has supported this concept. When Helene Cerusi of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, first heard the idea, however, she said, quote, I thought it was crazy. I didn't see how we could have that amount of heat and still have ice on top of it. With few direct measurements existing from under the ice, Cerusi and Eric Evans of JPL concluded the best way to study the mantle plume idea was by numerical modeling. They used the ice sheet system model, ISSM, a numerical depiction of the physics of ice sheets developed by scientists at JPL and the University of California in Irvine. Cerusi enhanced the ISSM to capture natural sources of heating and heat transport from freezing, melting and liquid water, friction and other processes. To assure the model was realistic, the scientists drew on observations of changes in the altitude of the ice sheet surface made by NASA's IceSat satellite and airborne operation IceBridge campaign. Quote, These place a powerful constraint on allowable melt rates, the very thing we wanted to predict, end quote, Ivan said. Since the location and size of the possible mantle plume were unknown, they tested a full range of what was physically possible for multiple parameters, produced, producing dozens of different simulations. They found that the flux of energy from the mantle plume must be no more than 150 milliwatts per square meter. For comparison, in U.S. regions with no volcanic activity, the heat flux from Earth's mantle is 40 to 60 milliwatts. Under Yellowstone National Park, a well-known geothermal hotspot, the heat from below is about 200 milliwatts per square meter, averaged over the entire park, though individual geothermal features such as geysers are much hotter. Cerusi and Evans simulations using a heat flow higher than 150 milliwatts per square meter showed too much melting to be compatible with the space-based data, except in one location an area inland of the Ross Sea known for intense flows of water. This region required a heat flow of at least 150 to 180 milliwatts per square meter to agree with the observations. However, seismic imaging has shown that mantle heat in this region may reach the ice sheet through a rift 
that is, a fracture in Earth's crust such as appears in Africa's Great Rift Valley. Mantle plumes are thought to be narrow streams of hot rock rising through Earth's mantle and spreading out like a mushroom cap under the crust. The buoyancy of the material, some of it molten, causes the crust to bulge upward. The theory of mantle plumes was proposed in 1970s to explain geothermal activity that occurs far from the boundary of the tectonic plate, such as Hawaii and Yellowstone. The Marie Birdland mantle plume formed 50 to 110 million years ago, long before the West Antarctic ice sheet came into existence. At the end of the last ice age, around 11,000 years ago, the ice sheet went through a period of rapid, sustained ice loss when changes in global weather patterns and rising sea levels pushed warm water closer to the ice sheet, just as is happening today. Sarusi and Ivan suggest the mantle plume could facilitate this kind of rapid loss. Their paper, titled Influence of a West Antarctic Mantle Plume on Ice Sheet Basal Conditions, end quote, was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Solid Earth. This is from Alan Ruiz, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Pasadena, California, on NASA, on the NASA site, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. And now in this article, they say that the mantle plume is, for example, what's causing the Hawaii, the Hawaii eruptions. And we see that the May 3rd eruption of Kilauea, which is still going on about 10 weeks later, is still unending. And that's, from what they say, a mantle plume. Also, we know that geologists have found that and the Antarctic has about 100 volcanoes. And of course, part of the volcanoes situated on the West Antarctic are in the Ring of Fire of the Pacific, South Pacific Coast. Most of these volcanoes are underneath the ice sheet and some have peaks that are above the ice. As we said in the previous video, geologists believe that the underground volcanoes of the Antarctic are also what is causing the melting of the ice sheets as well. This is an example of one of the volcanoes of Antarctica, Mount Erebus, and we see that the summit is of course above the ice sheet. And you can see it smoking in the distance. One of the 100 volcanoes found on the continent of Antarctica.